WWE is right now in dire strengths of people for WrestleMania. But uh, there is one thing that WWE is possibly going to do at WrestleMania. And as a matter of fact, it's not just one thing. It's one out of four things. One out of four things that WWE could do with The Undertaker at WrestleMania. And you can see in my voice that I'm not absolutely thrilled about these four possibilities. But there are some that could go quite well. Ladies and gentlemen, WrestleMania 33, The Undertaker, and four possibilities for The Undertaker at WrestleMania. I guess uh, this is the part where I say, here we go, right? Well then, uh, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, WW Movie Acre here. I just started on my own name. I started it again. I cannot speak that loud right now. Because. <sighs> just because. I cannot speak that loud right now. But, you know, it works perfectly with what I'm talking about because, man, there is, uh, there's too much upsetting news, you know. Too many things that, uh, that really are, you know, really isn't making anybody happy at this point. It's really, if anything, is discouraging people. It's not creating any intrigue. What I'm talking about is, you know, WrestleMania and the build towards it. You know, um, I don't know if it's just me, but, uh, it's always quite depressing around this time of year. Right when WrestleMania comes around, you just hope that everything goes well. It's very, very, it's, it's sort of like, uh, you know, taking a test or, or an exam or whatever you know it's very very stressful once you take it and you're done with it, it's good and then you feel better whether you pass or fail well that depends right but Wrestlemania it's sort of the same thing it's you hope that the build is good at times it's not really and um, once it happens it happens if they, if they were good or bad that at least people don't have to see that failure in the company ever again is what I'm trying to say and this year it seems as if WWE has another bright idea. WWE teasing plans for The Undertaker with four things he has not done. <sighs> you know, why can't they just give us, like, Cena versus Taker? Does it have to be this difficult? Why can't they just give us Taker versus Finn Balor? Does it have to be this difficult? I am honestly so freaking pissed off. What is what good is going to come out with Roman Reigns and The Undertaker? Please explain to me. Why can't you just listen to the fans? Then you wouldn't have these fucking people writing these retarded ass articles. Anyway, I'm just going to just going to get through this. I really do not uh feel like talking about this stuff. I do love making videos. That's why I'm making one right now, but I know that people will tune into this video because it's about The Undertaker and it's about the rumors right now regarding WrestleMania 33 and more specifically The Undertaker. Everyone is wondering if he will ever really face off against Roman Reigns at the big pay-per-view or if he is truly too injured to compete. Now WWE is... that's that. Well, first, of, first of all, that's another issue that I have. I'm upsetting to see The Undertaker be injured. Now WWE is doing one of their great teases as to what may be in store by revealing four things that The Undertaker has not accomplished in his illustrious career. Now, 
Number one is he hasn't competed competed in NXT. Yes, he has appeared both on Raw and SmackDown. And he was on both first episodes of the two series, but he has never competed in NXT. And Corey Graves gives a couple of examples, such as The Undertaker versus Shinsuke, versus Shinsuke Nakamura, Brothers of Destruction versus Authors of Pain, and the newly crowned NXT Tag Team Champions. This one isn't likely to happen as The Undertaker is already part-time on the WWE main roster to start with, and anything is possible though, and if he wanted to, the company could make it happen. Would I want to see that? Yeah, I guess. But, uh, the guy doesn't belong in NXT. Period. He could defeat Vince McMahon. He hasn't defeated Vince McMahon yet. Are you talking about in a match? Because I don't know about that. Really, like, who's going to carry who? Seriously. Um, on a number of occasions, The Undertaker has faced off with Vince McMahon. Um, but he's never been really able to score a victory over him. He faced him on Monday Night Raw a few years ago, but Taker shoved the referee and got himself disqualified. <clears throat> Excuse me. At Survivor Series in 2003, The Undertaker lost a bear to live match when Kane interfered and helped Vince McMahon. Now McMahon is 71, and there's a good chance that they may never end up wrestling again in another match. Undertaker's never won the Intercontinental Championship. He doesn't really need titles, okay? It, like, he doesn't really need titles, okay? So I'm not even going to talk about this. Pretty much it's just talking about how the guy has never won... He's pretty much never won any other titles in WWE, and that includes the European and United States titles. Who cares? Graves also says that the current champion may need to watch his back if The Undertaker chooses to go after the belt he has never held. Currently, Ambrose holds the Intercontinental title on SmackDown. You seriously, that's gonna, you seriously, you seriously think that's going to happen? You seriously think that's going to happen? No. It's not going to happen. And he's never won an Iron Man match. Yet the chances of The Undertaker participating in another Iron Man match are ex extremely slim because the guy is freaking 52 and time, like guys like him with the hip surgery and stuff, they can't last that long. 52 old, year, old, old guys cannot last. They get gassed very quickly. Undertaker's not one of those guys, but it's extremely, extremely dangerous for his health. If The Undertaker is healthy enough to go, he will have a match at WrestleMania 33, and this one... Whether it be against Roman Reigns or not, WWE is most likely out of their way to tease these four things that he's never done throughout the 30 years and which may mean absolutely nothing, but it could also hint in the future there's something more to come. While an Iron Man match and competing in NXT seem incredibly out of the question, the other two aren't impossibilities. The Intercontinental Championship and uh, Vince McMahon, I think if out of these four, if anything were to happen before The Undertaker retires, I don't think competing in NXT is possible. Iron Man match, I don't think that's possible either. In terms of uh, Intercontinental Championship, no, probably not. The guy is more than the WWE title. <laughs> that's what I can say, more than that. So he doesn't belong in any mid-card championship thing. If he's ever going to, in terms of a match with Vince, no, I don't see that happening. I don't see any of these happening. The only thing that could possibly happen is if he does something like he did with Shane McMahon where Vince is backing somebody up. That's something, or well, if you know, if Vince is part of the storyline, but he's not in the match. That's it. I don't even know why you're think putting that on an article like this. Impossible. Four things he's ever done. Yeah. How about you write down four things Undertaker will never do? Change the damn title. Change it right now. God damn it! In quest your news worth sharing. What the hell's wrong with you guys? Anyways, any other news I got? Nikki Bella officially leaving WWE after WrestleMania 33. WWE has, you know, the time and place to set Roman Reigns as the biggest heel of all time. We've already talked about this stuff. If Roman Reigns turns heel, it'll be the best thing ever. Here's something that you guys, I know you guys give a shit about, and this is what I also give a shit about. WWE confirms recent injury will sideline Seth Rollins. Reports saying that Rollins is out of the live events for the rest of this weekend, he's out for eight weeks. Talked about this already, but this is a new article. I want to read what they say. Probably the same thing. I believe so. Uh, it looks like they have been treating his leg. It says WWE.com confirm can confirm that the former champion has not been cleared to compete at any live events. A, a full medical update will be given Monday night on Raw. Okay, of course, this is a horrible 
you know, blow to any momentum that Rollins has been trying to gain since returning in May and at Extreme Rules, you know, from his attack on Raw. Uh, it says the direction of Rollins was heading, including competing against Mojo Fastlane, followed by Triple H at WrestleMania 33. Now, unfortunately, the WWE called an emergency audible on WrestleMania plans. And other options are being set in place with an expectation that Rollins will miss his second, you know, the second event, the second biggest, well, the biggest event twice in a row. According to The Sun, thesun.com, Rollins is indeed expected to miss WrestleMania due to Joe's attack during his Raw debut. Fans had to post the conversation between Joel and had with Rollins while he clinched in his cocaine clutch. Afraid that Rollins injured himself during the attack, he asked if he was alright. Rollins responded, I hope so. Hoping that the guy could actually make it until April 2nd, but it doesn't look like that's happening anytime soon, unfortunately. <sighs> As Samoa Joe was choking Seth Rollins out on the mat Monday Night in Raw, he was aware enough to notice that something was wrong with the ar architect, asking him if he was okay. You have to listen closely for that part, but you can clearly hear Rollins respond to him with, I hope so. The actual broadcast when they were on Monday Night Raw Live, um, it just looked like Rollins was sort of... It did, I did see something, but it just looked like he was sort of like trying to gasp for air. And that's a way that wrestlers, you know blend in speaking and actual storytelling so that people don't know what there's people don't even hear them right and that's where they dim down the uh the volume but the thing is that here they extended the volume they sort of bo you know bumped it and boosted it up so we could hear what they were saying and that's what they exactly said now as reported right now of course there is fear that rollins may miss his second wrestlemania in a case in, in a row and two you know again you know which would truly be the most heartbreaking part of his you know of all of this and indeed in in, this, in in the case and his basically career I guess now as reported if Rollins gets cleared for Wrestlemania 33 or even before then chances are that he will still not compete at the event due to WWE be, being very cautious he would re-injured his knee <sighs> you know it just because it's Wrestlemania doesn't mean that it's just it, the biggest event of the year. Who is like who the fuck cares? You're going to be wrestling there because you want to. No, no, no. It's another pay per view. It's another live show. They're going to wrestle. There is nothing new here, ba ladies and gentlemen. Maybe, maybe that. You know he uh, he does come back. He's not going to be wrestling. And if this guy does come back, let's say in four weeks. Let's say if he if he is like John Cena and gets back in four weeks. They're not going to have him just wrestle right away at WrestleMania. And if they do do that, well then, I hope Rollins makes it through the match. Now, at this point, the best option for Rollins is to sit out at WrestleMania and prepare for the years to come. Sadly, it looks like he will miss another one. But it is ultimately for his good. If Rollins still you know gets involved in WrestleMania, there's certainly is an opportunity for an instant last year both Cena and Rock had physical restrictions that prevented a full match but both were involved at the event as the Rock defeated Eric Rowan in seconds and Cena played the equalizer with the Wyatt family outnumbering the Rock now whichever about Triple H is involved in WrestleMania 33 Rollins can interfere and cost him the match this can extend the feud culminate to Re SummerSlam not WrestleMania what a great way the story would build there but it's also like hmm this was a WrestleMania match he just skipped out on WrestleMania. But really, I think it will actually, you know, the, the seven months that people have been bullshitting about, oh, there's no, there's been no story. Like, seriously. You'll have the story now. There's four months to, you know, use that. I don't know how WWE is going to do that. Plans are shifting all over the place. Samoa Joe can still be involved in this feud as a hurdle, as he and Rollins can have a match uh, at one or two pay-per-views events before August. You know, like... Uh, you know, if uh, if Rollins is cleared by eight, eight weeks and he's not wrestling at WrestleMania, uh, you know, possibly, I guess, you could say another month or two later after he's done, after he's healed, wrestles Samoa Joe, wrestles again, you know. Um, and Triple H maybe, you know, comes in the third encounter, the rubber match between Samoa Joe and Seth Rollins. Something could possibly happen there. There, there are certainly ways to work around Rollins' injury, but unfortunately it looks like he will not be competing at in Orlando on April 2nd. Ladies and gentlemen, 
there is still something in me right now that says that this is a work. This is a fucking work. And I'll tell you what makes me think that. WWE has reported that Seth Rollins is out for live events. Why would they say that when they know that Rollins is out for eight weeks anyways? Why would they say that? Reportedly out for eight weeks anyway. I guess WWE.com did not report that he was out for eight weeks. And as far, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think so. So that means that if WWE didn't report it, they're just going right to that. Okay, Seth Rollins is not competing at live events. They're not saying that he's out for eight weeks or whatnot. There was rumors that, you know, said that he was supposed to be out for eight weeks. And one more thing, the eight-week thing, the eight-week gimmick... That is the last week before WrestleMania. That's the last week before WrestleMania. And it seems like it is just, it is not a work, but everything lines up together. The pieces in the puzzle all fit together. The only thing that really makes it not a work, I mean, even him walking out on crutches, who the hell plays that? Nobody, right? I guess since he was supposed to be in a big time match, he's injured again. And I understand it's number two. Injury number one, 2015. Injury number two, 2017. What doesn't make it look like a work or, or doesn't make it look like a shoot was the fact that it was it literally... It's like WWE is building the storyline with all these different types of news saying he's not on live events, eight weeks, you know, runs with his Twitter and everything. Literally, it feels like it's not a work. But you know why it works so perfectly to make us to, to possibly fool us that it's not a work or to even, you know, say it is a shoot. It is real is because it's near WrestleMania season. It's because the guy has had the same fucking injury again before. It's because it's right before WrestleMania. I just said this. He's had the same injury again. And before he's ha he's had it. So he can obviously feel emotional and people will be like, oh shit. But then people, you know, they could possibly say that, yeah, this is okay. I guess I believe it. But it could also possibly end up being fake. Right? When Samoa Joe said to Seth Rollins, are you okay? And he responded, I hope so. I looked at that and I was like, well, okay, so that could go both ways. That could either be them, you know, saying that so that people could then put it on social media and start a fucking conspiracy over it. Or that could have been legit and we weren't meant to hear anything at all. Maybe that was the case. When you look at the cocaine clutch, I, I didn't see the angle properly. I did see Seth Rollins falling down in an awkward position. I didn't see the leg bend or anything, but it seemed like that's what happened. But maybe his leg is not bent anyway. I don't know what to say, man. But in terms of how real this is, it's very difficult to understand that right now. WWE rumors. Top rumored matches for WrestleMania. Reigns and Undertaker still on. We know that. We got Hall of Famer who says he's 100% cured from prostate cancer Brett the Hitman Hart Brett Hart fully recovered from prostate cancer this is what he said my health is now good on my last visit with the doctor he told me that my PSA level was zero and I had a 110 recovery he said that I was it was a miracle one of the difficult aspects of the fight with prostate cancer was a decision to go to public you know, prostate cancer has killed a lot of people, and I, I like to think my coming out of it and talking about it would encourage other men to get checked. You know it's so crucial for me to stress that it's a just a blood test. you got to go get the blood test. If you're a man over 40 years of age, you need to get it. And, you know, he also said that... Um, you don't want to be like my brother, Smith, who's a guy that didn't worry about it and it's too late for him now. If you got prostate cancer, if you catch it early, you could die from it. And if you do catch it early, you can live or if, if you catch it early, you can live a pretty normal life as well. Um, 
at the end, Hurt is thankful that he's fully recovered and back to the gym, as he says, pretty close to normal. He's also a very busy guy as ever, and he has continues uh, continued his encouraging men to get tested for prostate cancer while still early. According to 660 News, Bret Hart will be appearing at the Rocky View Hospital in Calgary as part of a prostate cancer awareness event that includes free prostate uh, specific antigen PSA blood tests and an opportunity to meet and greet and take photos with a pro wrestling legend. Good on Bret Hart. Uh, you know, the the, the 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 shit that this family has gone through, it's, it's very, very... <sighs> the guy only wanted to wrestle, and that's what he was able to do. But so much shit came through the guy's family, he was losing his brother, two strokes, with then cancer. How much shit did Hart have to go through and be able to, you know, get out of this? The guy is truly a fighter. Whether this was luck or not, he surely did work for it. And, you know, I'd have to say that, uh, you know, guys like Bret Hart are the ones that, uh, you know, truly are the inspiring ones to a lot of people. And, you know, whether you, uh, you believe it or not, it's up to you. But again, you know, Bret Hart surviving cancer, thank God. And, you know, it's always a great thing to see a Hall of Famer, uh, you know, live longer because we've had so many people die nowadays and that's absolutely horrible. You know what else is horrible? To a lot of people, Triple H versus Shane McMahon is back on the table for WrestleMania. This was the original plans for WrestleMania. Triple H versus Shane McMahon. News out today that that's what they're planning. How could this go? It's a SmackDown versus Raw storyline. I don't know how Shane McMahon is going to be put into this. I think, I think if Samoa Joe, one second, if Samoa Joe is going to SmackDown and he feuds with John Cena, here's the thing with that. Feuding with John Cena, that means that there could possibly be disruption on SmackDown because now Joe is there. He could cause havoc on SmackDown. Shane could be like, you know, well... Dude, that doesn't really make any sense either. I'm I'm taking ideas off the top of my head. I don't think that makes any sense either because then Shane would why would Shane say that? Why would Shane say that, you know, Triple H, you know, we don't want Samoa Joe here. Or maybe he just surprises up on SmackDown somehow, right? And then Shane McMahon has an issue with Triple H. That could work. That's a way that it could work. Samoa Joe is the missionary, the higher mercenary for Triple H. You book him like that. So I think the feud around this is going to be Samoa Joe with Triple H. Samoa Joe could appear on SmackDown, cause havoc, you know, possibly um, cause issues with John Cena. Or he could just cause issues altogether. Shane McMahon could be like, why the hell is he here? He's going to have a talk with Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Triple H confronts. I, that's a, It's a very, very weird type of a way to capitalize on the storyline. To be honest, I think about it and I say, you know, well... If Samoa Joe does do that, it's almost certain that the guy's going to stay on SmackDown then, right? Or is he going to go back to Raw? Like, or is he just going to go back to NXT? It's very, very difficult to predict that because in my mind, if you have a guy that pops up somewhere, like in your house, and he takes your food, right? And you call the guy's parents, right? The guy's going to leave, right? He's not going to stay in your house. The same thing like SmackDown. If that happens on SmackDown... Is Triple H going to take Samoa Joe away? Probably not. He's going to be like, well, Samoa Joe does what Samoa Joe wants. And then Shane could possibly confront Triple H again. I guess that could work. I guess that, that that's a possibility. It's sort of like, you know, a kid who doesn't fucking listen at all. And no matter what you say, doesn't care, right? I guess you could work it like that. And that's probably the only way that this is possible. As Seth Rollins is injured. Seth Rollins will most likely not be competing at WrestleMania. Hopefully that's not the truth. But unfortunately, that does seem to happen. As I did say yesterday, WWE has contacted Lita for a potential match with Charlotte at WrestleMania 33. I did talk to you about women coming back. Because this, they're giving Charlotte the Oscar treatment. She has not, well, she has not lost at pay-per-views, right? But how many matches has she actually had on Raw? I guess she has lost, okay, well, she's been pinned by Bailey and all that stuff and Sasha Banks. But they're building her up as Asuka, to be honest, at pay-per-views. 
And I did say this again. I would love to see Asuka and Charlotte at WrestleMania 33. And I've already posted that in my WrestleMania. This was a couple of days ago anyway. WrestleMania 33 matches that could possibly happen. Please check that on my channel as well. A massive feud between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns is happening very soon. I don't know about that. But I do know about something. Why was Roman Reigns entered in at number 30 at the Royal Rumble? We all know why. Let's see what... Uh, this article has to say most feel that Roman Reigns was added or feel that the move to add Reigns would not have been as bad if the you know fun surprises were present. But sadly, this did not go away uh, as WWE has planned it. You know, it seems that Reigns inclusion in the match had a few purposes, you know, which makes sense in theory. According to Wrestling Observer, WWE added Roman Reigns to the match firstly to help set up a match with The Undertaker. Vince also wanted, you know, The Undertaker to have a big match with Roman Reigns at WrestleMania for some time and wanted to make sure that this uh, actually happened before he retired. Undertaker was eliminated at the Rumble, which supposedly pushed for The Undertaker to get angry enough to work a match with Reigns. Many feel that this was not enough reason to add Reigns, as there could have been uh, always a better setup down the line. Now, the other major reasons was, you know, the most sense has to do with the eventual winner, Orton. W felt like adding, you know, Roman Reigns to help the match uh, would be a big enough point of hatred than anyone else eliminating him, which will get a huge pop from the crowd. So the WWE fans will be ensured Reigns would not win the, another Rumble. Of course, WWE got what they wanted as Reigns was eliminated by Orton for the win and got a huge reaction due to it. That's exactly what we were talking about. The crowd popped for Roman Re Well, what the fuck am I saying? The crowd popped for Randy Orton, booed Roman Reigns. And essentially, they wanted Orton to go over on the crowd. And that is pretty much what happened. Did people want Orton to win? I don't know about that. But that's pretty much all the news I got for you guys, ladies and gentlemen. Undertaker, his matches, I don't really like where that's going. Really wish he was just in a match with Finn Balor. It's very simple. But you guys are just not... This WWE doesn't want to do shit for us. Fuck you, Vince McMahon. Please do something right. Ever in your late day and career. Seriously, man. And in terms of Cena, his match right now, I don't know about that as at this point. Nikki Bella is supposed to retire. A mixed tag team match, I don't know about that. With Maurice, The Miz, Nikki Bella, John Cena. I don't know about that, man. John Cena, Nikki Bella with Maurice and Miz. I Just thinking about that, That's you're demoting these guys. Come on. I did say this. Individual matches were better. Please check out my WrestleMania 33 matches. I do talk about that as well. And, you know... What could be up with Seth Rollins? We seriously do not know, but it looks like the guy's missing WrestleMania. Not very good news today, ladies and gentlemen. Not very good news. But hopefully I do have some news that could possibly entertain you guys tomorrow, Sunday, the next week. Because we do have news coming up talking about Kurt Angle. Yes, we do have news about Kurt Angle. But I want to save that for another video because right now... There's already enough that we've already talked about. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you later.